Sammy found Lechero and said he wanted to kill Michael. But Michael, who came out alive from the cage, has become famous. He rejected Sammy's request, not to mention that Lechero relied on him to escape from prison. Sammy sneered and walked away silently. T-Bag noticed that Sammy's power was growing, knowing that jailbreaking is urgent. Giving Whistler a look, Whistler immediately went to Mahoney and told him it was time to get to work. Mahoney, who had just received a photo of his son, made up his mind. This time, he was determined to get out no matter what. Galago found Michael and asked up the helicopter. But Michael wasn't going to let him get involved. It was too dangerous. Whistler mentioned Teabag joining in. Michael looked at Mahoney, knowing that it's time to lead the team again. The second generation escape team prepared to work in the underground passage. Teabag kept emphasizing the importance of his presence, but Michael couldn't be bothered with him. He had his own plan and didn't need Teabag to go down. Teabag was unwilling, but Lechero told him to stay above and keep watch to prevent Sammy from appearing suddenly. Teabag had no choice but to stay above. The passage needs something to support it, such as saws and hammers. Lechero said he could handle it and gave Teabag money to go buy them. As soon as Teabag left, Sammy pointed a gun at his head and said it was time to replace the boss. Lechero said he wasn't fit to be the boss and couldn't even handle small tasks. Sammy didn't have much confidence either, but he said he had decided to be the boss. They were looking for a board to use as a support when they heard Sammy bringing someone to move the wine outside. He took out the chicken feet and announced that he was taking over the prison, but no one said a word. Then he said that whoever catches Michael will own this box of wine. Lechero and Teabag discuss what to do. Teabag turned his attention to Bellic opposite, and he immediately went to find Bellic. He told Bellic that as long as they killed Sammy, they would agree to take him to escape. Bellic hesitated, but Teabag had his leverage. Then he went to find Sammy and asked if the chicken feet were here. Sammy glanced at him and asked who he wanted to challenge. He stared at Sammy with confidence and said the person he wanted to challenge was wearing a vest. Sammy realized it was himself and couldn't believe it. Bellic directly threw the chicken feet on the ground and made a triumphant gesture towards the cheering crowd below. Afterwards, Teabag returned to the prison cell. Bellic seemed to have seen victory waving at him. However, at that moment, he realized that the acetone was gone, which completely broke his hope. He could only use his fists to confront Sammy head on. On the other hand, Lincoln was investigating Whistler's true identity. He learned the name on Whistler's passport from Sophia. Suker helped Lincoln make an appointment with the person who arranged for him to work in prison. Lincoln asked him to stay with Susan to buy time. He has a plan to take the initiative and let the company take the lead. In the end, can only die. However, Sophia had objections and asked if his plan included rescuing Whistler. He had promised to take her to Paris and couldn't give up on him. Seeing Sophia's unwavering determination, Lincoln felt helpless. But he assured her that her man was included in the plan. Susan is in contact about business matters. Sucre came over and said that there was nothing unusual about Lincoln and that he had no other plans. And then he hurriedly left with a guilty conscience. Susan laughed and didn't even want the money, which excited Susser when he saw the huge sum. Susan said she would give him the other half after the job was done. Holding a check for 25000 Sucre became a little flustered. At this time, Sophia had already arrived at the meeting place with Lincoln. Surprisingly, Lincoln had bought a bomb, and after Sophia reluctantly finished translating, she stiffly followed Lincoln out. Lincoln didn't tell her the purpose of the bomb. He handed the bomb to Sucre. Ask him to call Susan and tell her he has information, insisting that she drive to pick him up and then get in the car. Lincoln's plan was to directly blow up Susan. Following Lincoln's instructions, he stuffed the bomb into Susan's car and casually made up a story about Lincoln buying a gun, ready to leave. She stopped Sucre and said that the scene they acted in the lobby was fake. Sucre was shocked, but Susan actually knew from the beginning that they were acting and the check had another purpose. Sucre received the check and sent the money to Maracruz. And Susan had already followed the money transfer records and found Maracruz's address. Sucre was dumbfounded when he heard this. Just as he was about to warn, Susan yelled back. He hurriedly went back to give her genuine intelligence. 
Otherwise, Mara Cruz's life would be in danger. Suker tried to retrieve the bomb, but before he succeeded, Susan asked him to get off the car. Before parting ways with Sophia, Lincoln specifically bought her an Eiffel Tower pendant. He said that Whistler would not take her with him, and he would take her, and Sophia was tempted. The prison passage project encountered problems, and Mahoney's team was almost unable to hold on. Fortunately, Michael stepped in and used support nails to hold the boards in place. And they needed 20 more of these support nails. Whistler asked Michael what to do after going up. Michael sarcastically said, a helicopter would be the best option, of course. Whistler became anxious and said the company ordered him to kill him. But he didn't. His family's lives are also in the hands of the company. What should he do? Mahoney can only come out to keep the peace. Whistler wanted to resist, claiming that he was really just a fisherman. Later, Susan deceived him. This innocent man by saying they wanted to cooperate, and the company wanted the coordinates in his possession. If he had known he was dealing with two clever individuals, perhaps he wouldn't have brought this upon himself. They told him to just admit he was affiliated with the company instead of pretending here. Michael took the bird guide and flipped through it a couple of times. Whistler, fearing being left behind, obediently answered their questions. Mahoney thought he was overthinking and suggested going up to find tools instead of wasting time here. Michael won't abandon him, otherwise they would expose him. Michael smiled, but there was still movement above so they decided to go up later. The time for the duel had come. Sammy was ready, while Bellick was in disarray. When he was taken out, he tried to deny it. He randomly pointed at an old man, saying that he was the one he wanted to challenge. Sammy's men immediately brought the man to the duel arena. But Bellick, listening to the cheers, still raised his arm. He had made up his mind, but the difference in strength was too great. Bellick could only take the beating. Teabag urged Bellick to pull himself together. If they didn't do something, Michael would come out soon. If Michael came out, the entire plan would be ruined. The oblivious underground trio ran into Sammy's men by chance. Seeing that the other person's eyes were wrong, they ran away immediately, but they were caught up when they entered the underground passage. Michael tried to pull Whistler inside but ended up leaving him outside. The duel had reached its final moments, and Bellick was about to die. Suddenly, Sammy's men shouted from above that Michael had been found, causing Sammy to abandon Bellick and run. His men were pressuring Whistler for the password, but Whistler genuinely didn't know. Sammy pointed a gun at him, but he couldn't come up with a fake password. Meanwhile, Michael was still trying to open the door. If he died, Lincoln would be in trouble too. However, Mahoney couldn't let him sacrifice himself. They needed to prepare before opening the door. Hearing Whistler being beaten and being told not to open the door, Michael was also distressed. Mahoney picked up a steel rod, preparing for a fight while Michael took something off the support board. They were getting ready but Sammy was also not idle. He went straight to Lechero, demanding that Lechero open the door for him. Seeing Sammy constantly playing with his gun, Lechero mocked him. Sammy, in a fit of anger, fired a shot, but Lechero still refused to open the door. Finally, Michael opened the door. Sammy went inside and saw the escape project, both shocked and furious. Said he was going to run away, but didn't take him with him. Michael said that it was all his now, and as long as he agreed to take Whistler out with him, he would tell him all the plans. Sammy punched him, saying he had no right to make conditions. So Sammy stood on the table, wanting to experience it up close. And that was exactly what Michael wanted. As soon as Sammy put his hand on it, all the soil on it fell down. Sammy died, and his men were easily taken care of. Lechero looked at Sammy, who was buried alive without any emotion. He just wanted to know the impact this would have on the plan. If the guard saw a large hole collapse on the ground, it would be over. Fortunately, the ground was relatively solid and flat. After checking everything, he started demonstrating and kicked the bodies down there, announced that Sammy's day experience was over and carried the liquor back. Meanwhile, Bellick approached Teabag, wanting to join their group. Otherwise, he would expose their plan successfully threatening Teabag. At this time, Lincoln came to visit Michael and encountered Galago on the way. Galago took out his savings from the past three years, 
begging Michael to take him with them, but Michael refused. Escape from prison is tantamount to risking one's life. He doesn't want this child to die. Meanwhile, Sophia, holding the Iron Tower, grew angrier and angrier towards Whistler. In a fit of anger, she emptied Whistler's clothes. However, during this process, she made a new discovery. She had never seen this bag before. So suspicious, Sophia started searching it. She felt something in the inner layer. On the other hand, the brothers, Lincoln and Michael, were meeting, and both sides claimed to be ready. Lincoln told Michael that he had investigated the name on Whistler's passport. He said there were no fish in the fishing area he claimed to have gone to. Michael wasn't surprised but was pondering over what Whistler's true identity was if he wasn't a fisherman. Looking at the password box taken out from the bag's inner layer, she could only confirm that she no longer trusted this person.